कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो so the spiritual master's order is to develop taste for hearing and chanting. To develop a desire to become attracted to hearing and chanting the glories, the name, the pastimes of Krishna. And the disciple, whatever varna and whatever ashram they may be in, should take the spiritual master's order as his life and soul. Now, there's a very nice verse in the Bhagavad Gita which became very inspiring to Srila Prabhupada in his uh, uh, pre-sanyas days. And specifically, Prabhupada read one purport by Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. The verse was from the Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, text 41. Vyavya Satmaka Budir, Ekeha Kuru Nandana, famous verse, Bahu Sakahi Anantas Cha Budayo Vyavasainam. Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose, and their aim is one. O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched. 241, Bhagavad Gita. So, those who are on this path are resolute in purpose. What does it mean to be resolute in purpose? Because if one is intelligent, he's resolute in purpose. And if one is unintelligent, his intelligence is splayed out, many branched. So what does it mean? Now, Vishwana Chakravati Thakur has given a commentary to this verse of Bhagavad Gita. And this particular commentary became a great inspiration to Srila Prabhupada. And it is as follows. The best kind of intelligence I can have is intelligence used in the service of Krishna. The intelligence is defined as fixed when it is intent upon my spiritual master's instructions, such as chanting the names of Krishna, remembering his activities, and performing service to his lotus feet. His instructions are my sadhana and my life, both in the beginning stages of bhakti as well as in bhakti's perfectional stage. I desire only to follow his instructions. I accept nothing else as my life's work, even in dreams. Whether I am happy or distressed, whether the material world remains or is destroyed, I do not care. There is no loss for me. I simply must carry out the orders of my spiritual master. Fixedness upon his orders is determined intelligence in devotional service, and only by being fixed in his orders is such determined intelligence possible. So Srila Prabhupada got the instruction from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur to spread this Krishna consciousness movement to the English-speaking world. English-speaking world, he expanded to mean everywhere in the world, because practically everywhere in the world, English language is also understood. And in any case, the language has been translated now into so many languages. So, in other words, to go all over the world and spread Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada took it this way. His god brothers did not always understand so perfectly. At least many of them could not imagine how it was foretold that in every town and village of the world, the name of Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya would be chanted. But Prabhupada had no doubt about it because of the order coming in disciplic succession. Similarly, that order has now been conveyed to us in the form of distributing this Krishna conscious knowledge to all the fallen conditioned souls. Srila Prabhupada ordered all of the members of ISKCON that they should dedicate themselves, life and soul, to helping him in the mission of his Guru Maharaj. Specifically, that his books should be translated his books should be printed and they should be distributed like anything. And Prabhupada said that this transcendental distribution of books would bring about a revolution in the world, a revolution in the consciousness of men. We see that people are overwhelmed by all kinds of different combinations of the modes of material nature. And they cannot make out at all what is their real good. These books help to clear away their confusion. As we said earlier, uh, lust is due to ignorance. And ignorance means forgetfulness of our true identity or absorption in the false ego. 
So when one gets a transcendental book, the first thing that one must come to grips with is that one is eternally the servant of God. I was listening to one lecture Prabhupada was giving in Australia, and there was some discussion with some people in the audience, and they were arguing so many things, that why are you introducing a different religion, why are you introducing a different name of God, and Prabhupada just kept battling back, saying that if you go to a country, a foreign country, and you know that there's a president, but you don't know the name of the president, and I inform you that the president's name is such and such, then take advantage of that knowledge. It is very good that now you know the president's name. So you don't know what the name of God is because your religions don't even have a name for God. They just say God, but they have no name for God. So we're telling you the name of God is Krishna. What is the harm? And so far, he said, as what religion you practice, the point that God says is practice religion. It does not matter whether it is in this form or that form, this ritual or that ritual. But one must worship God. Just like Prabhupada said, you may wear, wear different types of clothing. But the main point is that you must be clothed. To be civilized means to dress yourself. What, what you wear is a detail. So how you perform particular ri rituals within a certain religion is a detail. But the principle is to worship God and to chant His holy name. And this is proclaimed in all the religions of the world. So, Prabhupada's books proclaim this truth. And the world needs to hear this knowledge. Uh, we should understand with full faith that if we pursue book distribution as a dedicated activity without uh, uh, getting distracted, then we will see that a revolution will take place. Why? Because the order of the guru is fulfilled. The soldier thinks that my... my uh, Commander has given me an order. And he doesn't start worrying about whether or not the battle is going to be won, whether, the, you know, if I fulfill this order, what about that order, and what about this, and this, and this, and this. He just thinks, I have got this order, which I have to fulfill. So let me work on this order. If everybody in the battlefield starts to come up with their own ideas about what's going to be done, the, you will get massacred. In the same way, the order is very clear from the general which is to produce and to distribute transcendental literatures like anything. And when the world is inundated with these books, then, you know, we will be able to see a change take place. Then so many other schemes and plans of spreading Krishna consciousness will also become effective and meaningful. So we can see that where those orders have been followed with faith, very wonderful results are taking place. Very, very wonderful results are taking place. And people are, just like we see now in Eastern Europe and Russia, that because so many books were distributed, now everything has opened up there. Now, of course, the materialists may give their interpretation, political interpretation for history. And they may have their economic interpretation of history. But we have got our spiritual interpretation of history. And our spiritual interpretation is that because of the massive distribution of transcendental literatures, you know, the whole situation changed. That is our vision of what is going on. Just like now at the Moscow Book Fair, in, in, in one week's time, they sold 300,000 big books. Krishna conscious books at the Moscow Book Fair. And it was all sold to bookstores. Bookstores took these books because the bookstores, they don't have any literature. And people want literature. So one, one company alone bought 150,000 books to stock all the bookstores with. They're so confident that our books are selling like anything. And now they're going into a print run. Five million books they're going to print just for the Soviet Union. They have one press in Germany now. They're distributing 32,000 books each week. Big books. Every week to sacred time devotees. 50 devotees distributing 32,000 books per week. They're all 50 devotees in the whole German Yantra now, or the eastern part of Germany. And the people are so eager to receive books. So, we have to push book distribution. If we push it, then we will see... You know, this is a transcendental activity. It does not matter whether one is a brahmachari, whether one is a grihasta or vanaprasta or sannyasi. No one should be in anxiety. Jai, sisi, konitani, jai. 
No one should be in anxiety thinking, how shall I maintain? Krishna will maintain us. If we are members of the army of Gornitai, we should not have any doubt about it. Gornitai is fully capable of maintaining the Sankirtan preachers. He will make arrangements. You may have to live a little simply. You may have to endure some hardship. But that is all right. The soldier is always willing to endure some anxiety, some hardship. In fact, he likes that. Just like I read one article was there in the, uh, in the newspaper. It said it gave a close-up of one young man who joined the French Foreign Legion. So uh, this French Foreign Legionnaire, he was from America, and it says that in the French Foreign Legion that many of the people are very desperate types of persons. And their character, some of them even small-time criminals. Not big murderers, but small-time criminals. So when they join, they have to give up everything. They give up all their possessions. They don't ask any past questions about anything. They just join and they take... It's very similar to Krishna consciousness, I was thinking. You see? We have, in other words, when you join Krishna consciousness, you have to give up everything. They don't ask any questions about the past. But they just say, now you have to go, and whatever we tell you to do, you must do. So this French legionnaire, foreign legionnaire, is very eager now to go into action in some, you know, in the war in the Middle East. He says, we, he says, against any battalion we will come out. One by one man on man, no one can defeat us. He was saying like this. And we're very eager to, to you know, go into the battle. Not, he was not fearful at all. So, uh, a devotee should be so bold and daring like this. A devotee should be very, very eager to do battle with the forces of Kali. Uh, why? Being assured of the backup of Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda Prabhu. We should not have any doubt or any fear thinking that the, the numbers are overwhelming, the odds are against us, just like the Pandavas. The odds were against them, but they did not feel. Krishna told Arjuna, you declare it, my devotee will never be defeated. So we have got the same side, Krishna's side, Arjuna's side, Hanuman's side, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu's side. How is it possible to be defeated? Only defeat comes from weakness of heart. This weakness of heart, where I think, oh, I cannot, I'm not so interested. As soon as you lose interest in spreading Krishna consciousness, then it is very difficult to, to fight Kali. But when one is very enthusiastic to be Krishna conscious, they become equally enthusiastic to preach Krishna consciousness. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, one who has got life, he can preach. So preaching and life are synonymous. And when we stop preaching, it means death for a devotee. It means compassion has dried up because one's own personal enthusiasm in spiritual life is waning. But when one is very enthusiastic, then he constantly thinks, like Prahlad Maharaj, how to bring everyone back with me. Not only to go back to home alone. Of course, we should go back to Godhead. Not that we don't take the time to do our sadhana. We have to be very strict in sadhana. But we should know that the uh, sadhana, having been fulfilled, our business is the order of guru. The guru's order is the active principle in a devotee's life. And what is that order? It is very clear. It is coming from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yari Deki Tare Kaha Krishna Upadesh. Amara Gai Guru Hai Tare Desh. Yari Deki Tare Kaha Krishna Wherever you go, whoever you meet, you speak to them the message of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. And in this age, that speaking comes in the form of Brihat Mridanga, giving them transcendental literatures. If we do this, Prabhupada, the disciple of succession, will shower the blessings upon us, and all the things we want for our movement, all the things we want for each other, that will happen, no doubt. When Guru is pleased, when, then Krishna is pleased. And when Krishna is pleased, nothing is impossible. Everything happens nicely. So, this is the principle. This is the transcendental principle. This is transcendental to Varnashram. This is transcendental to Brahmachari, Grihasta, Sanyas. It is meant for all the devotees. Prabhupada wanted our movement to be a transcendental movement to deliver the world. And Varnashram is there as a uh, underpinning, a foundation, in the sense that it is a background on which we can strengthen ourselves. In other words, when one is properly situated according to Varna and Ashram, they can work very, very strongly to spread Krishna consciousness. But we should know that the actual business is spreading Krishna consciousness. 
not simply strengthening ourselves according to Varna and Ashram. Varna and Ashram is a means to an end. It is never an end in itself. So, In other words, I'm saying to you that the soul and the dog is the same soul in you or me. Before we had a human body, what kind of body we had? You know, dogs, animals, plants. We went through all the different species. In those births, did we know why we were suffering? No. That's the sin. That is the karmic reaction. That is called the worst karma. It is heavy ignorance, tamagun. So now that you finally got a human body, if in the human body you still don't know, oh, then it's very, then it's a great misfortune. Now, our Hare Krishna movement, we are working very hard that at least anyone who has a human body should know why. Where they should know what karma is. Why do you think we work so hard to distribute these books? What is the whole reason why our movement is pushing, pushing, pushing books? Because we don't want someone to go through the human birth without at least one chance to understand. We don't want anyone to say, why didn't God give me this knowledge? If our movement exists on this planet, then we don't want any human being to be able to say, well, God didn't tell me about it. I didn't know. Let them at least get a book, then they can't tell Yamaraj, we didn't know. Then Yamaraj say, no, you were at the airport in Chicago and they gave you a book. You did know. Because when you invite them, it's going to be a very good thing. They're going to know this is not some cult. This is not some new thing. This is from your birth. And then you give them books. In the beginning, they're not going to want to visit your church, your temple, but they'll read a book. Then you'll understand the value of Prabhupada's books. Give them a book. You say, just read this book and ask me any questions after you read it. Give them one of the small books, Coming Back, Science of Self-Realization, Higher Taste. We got so many nice little books to tempt them. So, and you watch. Then you give them an invitation card to the Sunday feast. And when they come, you, re you say, look, Bob or Jack or whatever his name is, you bring your family, you'll be my guest. I personally stay with you the whole time. When they come, you meet them at the door. The whole Sunday feast, you stay with them. Tell them what it means. We'll have paintings on the wall. Show them the temple. They'll be impressed. Oh, they'll be impressed. Give them a Back to Godhead subscription for Christmas. Now you're going to have to start to think how to get these Americans interested. And some of them will be because they're not getting philosophy in their churches. I guarantee you, they got no philosophy. They don't have philosophy. Their own religious people are not that religious. This is the best field. Prophet said America was the best field for our movement. And the best preachers can prove to be the Indian people in America. I, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. It's not just Prabhupada, but all of you who can become great preachers. Because they can't look at you and say, you're just a cult member. They can't. You can say, look, this is from my birth, and it's from my father's birth, and his father's birth this is going back further than your religion goes back. And we got very, very good arguments on all their arguments. Every argument they'll ever throw at you, there's an answer for it. Because we have the philosophy, they don't. And some of them are going to be interested. And some of them will invite you to their churches to give lectures. You just got to fix yourselves up now in this Krishna consciousness. But I and it's fun. There's more fun to preach to someone who doesn't know this from the beginning than to preach to someone who already knows it. If, believe me, because how much are you going to preach to each other? You, all, you know, as soon as you say to the guys, I know, I know, I know. You all tell each other, I know that. I already heard it. But you preach to a man, he sits there, he listens, he asks questions, he says, really, and what about this? And they don't know anything. It's like a blank slate. It's so much fun to preach to Americans. You just have to try it. And the Madhavananda has to arrange. we got to arrange some program. Just like we'll go and we have some festival. We can have, they have these art fairs and things. We'll make a booth. And you man the booth and watch the Americans come up and ask questions. You know that changing bodies exhibit we have? You stand in front of this exhibit. It shows the bodies changing karma and reincarnation you watch all the Americans to come up and ask what does that mean what does this mean and then you got to preach and then they're going to argue well the Bible says this and you say well what about this and what about this 
Oh, it's very good. Then you get fired up about Krishna consciousness, you see. That's how we got it. This movement is dynamic. It's a dynamic thing. And it's the only thing that's going to save the world. Let's face it, the world is going to hell. The moral standards, the economy, everything going down, down, down. Except for Krishna consciousness, I don't see how you're going to keep things up. The morality is going down. Everything's going down. I remember when I joined Krishna Consciousness, there was Jayananda Prabhu, who was the temple president in San Francisco. And he used to sit there and he used to give a lecture and he'd be rocking back and forth. He was a taxi driver, you see. So as a taxi driver, so his class, his Srimad Bhagavatam class, was that he would tell you about all the people he picked up the previous day in his taxi and how they're suffering. He said, oh, they're suffering so much. And then he said, the other, yesterday I picked up this person and she was telling me about this and this and then I picked up the, and, the, and on and on. He was getting so many realizations simply driving his taxi. So anyone who is intelligent who simply opens his eyes and ears can see how the material world is full of suffering. A Brahma Bhuvano Loko Puno Avarati Narjuna Mamu Peti Then from the highest planet to the lowest all are places of suffering to Kalayam Ashashratam. So now you are all getting, you know, realization. These Sankirtan devotees act out of compassion because they see how much suffering people are enduring. Why? Simply out of ignorance. Simply out of ignorance. They don't have any better alternative. One reason. They are not properly educated. And therefore they are simply repeating what they have learned from their own parents and their teachers. More per perpetuating more ignorance the blind leading the blind. And out comes the devotee, who is Shastra Chaksu, who sees with the eyes of Scripture, who presents these eyes for everyone else to see. You know, it's like, what really we are doing is that the whole world are blind. And the Sankirtan devotees are going around with these, you know, books, which are just like giving people eyesight for the first time. Anyone who picks up this book and starts to read, they get vision. They get understanding because it is impossible to penetrate, impossible to penetrate the network of Maya without the help of a bona fide pure devotee. Without the help, just like Prabhupada's books, without the help of this vision, Srimad Bhagavatam appeared, didn't it? It appeared when Krishna left the world. Krishna is the son. And when Krishna left the world, when he wound up his manifest pastimes, the whole world appeared to be plunged in darkness. And it is at that moment that this book appeared. The book rose. Krishna set and this book rose up. The Bhagavatam and the Vedic literatures rose up and the whole you know, world became illuminated. At least anyone who took help from this Bhagavatam can see what is what. Otherwise, they cannot understand what is what and they become more and more entangled in sinful behavior. And that sinfulness causes them suffering. Suffering is due to sins. And sins are due to ignorance. And ignorance is due to lack of education. Therefore, we are directly ending the suffering of people when we distribute these books. And we should know that. And they will act. They will certainly act. As, as Hare Kesh Maharaj said once, they are like time bombs. They must go off. You know, it's like there's no way to defuse them. Somehow or other, they shall go off. And who, you know, when the, when the thing explodes, who gets... The result, only Krishna will say, who is qualified to get the result. So, with that type of conviction, we go forward. So, the supreme benediction. Now, what is that purusha, purusha, purusha artha bhajanam, the bestow? What is the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is loving devotion to Krishna. This is the ultimate goal. Namo maha badanyaya krishna prema pradayate krishnaya krishna chaitana namani gori tashena maha. This is what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to bestow. The ultimate goal. What is that? Very special thing. Very special thing. And it says, which no one else ever before gave. Very uh, big statement Srila Rupa Goswami has made. But no one else gave. That means there, were, there has been... Certainly there was some Krishna consciousness before, 
the great Acharyas have come before Lord Chaitanya. It is not that they were not there. Srila Madhvacharya, Ramanuja Charya, Vishnu Swami, Nimbarka Charya, they all came. And still Rupa Goswami has made this statement never before given. So it appears, I mean, is he sectarian? Is he simply a party man? Rupa Goswami, is he simply glorifying Lord Chaitanya at the cost of everyone else, making some false boasting, as so many people normally do? Certainly not. Srila Rupa Goswami is not that kind of person. He's a liberated personality. He never lies. He does not exaggerate in any way. Then why does he make this claim that Lord Chaitanya has come to bestow what no one else has ever come to give before? Because he has come to give that type of love which the residents of Vrindavan have for Krishna and especially that kind of love which the gopis have for Krishna, which is the most rare of all and is glorified above all and is rarely, rarely understood. So, a devotee who is very sincere, praying to Krishna, always, uh, Krishna illuminates his heart. What does it mean? It means that Krishna performs his pastimes within a devotee's heart. This goes on. Uh, a devotee is described that in the beginning, we simply learn to control our mind while we're chanting. Our chanting is simply to try to not make our mind wander. Therefore, you'll see in Bhagavad Gita the advice that wherever your mind wanders, pull it back. And also, wherever your senses go out, pull them within. This is a beginning stage, teaching us the basics of sadhana bhakti. Now, gradually, by the grace of guru and bhakti, Bhakti Devi, we will learn to be able to control our mind and senses. Then what do we have to do? Then the chanting of the mantra has to be done, hearing very carefully the glories of the holy name. The glories of the holy ma name means the pastimes of the Lord. And this is called mantra upasana. That means that a devotee naturally by chanting will remember some pastime of the Lord and feel great satisfaction remembering that pastime and chanting. This is called mantra upasana. And when that meditation stage of chanting becomes perfect, then all the pastimes, one after another, become revealed within the heart of the devotee as he chants the holy name of Krishna. So, therefore it is said that the Lord is ever increasingly fresh revealing himself in ever-increasing new ways within the heart of his devotee. Now, this, is, this can be translated into our practical daily service. We see that when we go out on Sankirtan, that the Lord reveals to us all kinds of new ways and means to convince the conditioned souls to take to Krishna consciousness. No question of there being boredom or some static situation. Every day when we go out, there are new pastimes, new Sankirtan pastimes. Each conditioned soul presents so many interesting arguments or characteristics. And Krishna, because of the sincerity of the Sankirtan devotee, praying to the Lord, Krishna reveals to the Sankirtan devotee how to speak in such a way to disengage the material modes of nature in that conditioned soul. In other words, a conditioned soul is entrapped by the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. But a devotee is on the transcendental platform, Brahmabhuta Prasanatma. And therefore, a devotee relates to the conditioned soul not on the basis of his mundane conditioning, but ultimately on the basis that he is a spirit soul. And because he relates on this platform, that person is brought onto a higher position by the association of a devotee. This is what actually takes place. By the association of a devotee, by the association of the Sankirtan preacher, the conditioned soul is brought to the spiritual platform, even if momentarily. And in that position, a devotee offers him Krishna's mercy in the form of transcendental books. And the person 
becomes very willing and says, yes, I will take. And according to how pure the devotee can inspire that conditioned soul and bring him free from the modes of material nature, he will take five books, six books, ten books, right? Or how many books? Twenty books? Unlimited books. <laughs> Unlimited books. Because he's not any longer on the material platform. How can a materialist take unlimited books? How can someone who is in the mode of passion or ignorance take so many books? It is not possible. Therefore, in the association of the Sankirtan devotee, a person becomes temporarily freed from the modes of material nature. So, this is, therefore, it is required that the Sankirtan devotee be a true transcendentalist. It is not in any way a material phenomena of going out and preaching. There's no question of playing some trick on the conditioned souls. We are not playing, we are playing a transcendental trick, if there is any trick. But the real fact is, it is purity, as Prabhupada said, it is purity which is the force. It is the purity of a devotee which will inspire the mode of, good, the mode of transcendental goodness within the heart of another. This is called Vishuddha Sattva. Vishuddha Sattva is the pure goodness. And Vishuddha Sattva is the principle which exists in the spiritual world. When a devotee goes on Sankirtan, he is not in the material world. When a devotee performs devotional service, he is not in the material world. Because devotional service cannot be performed on the material platform. Therefore, Prabhupada said, our temples are not material part of the material cities. They are embassies of the spiritual world. Similarly, a Sankirtan preacher is an ambassador from one of these embassies. And he's going out and, you know, giving out visas to everyone, right? Stamping their cards, giving them the visa. Oh, you, you are interested in going back to Godhead? Here, let me stamp you with this visa, you see? And then we give them, we even issue them the passport also. Passport, and we stamp them with visa. And according to their qualification or merit, they can take more and more and more books. So, we have to know what is the nature of the country that we represent. We have to know everything about the spiritual world. We have to know everything about spiritual science. Therefore, it is very, very important that we very make a very careful study of Prabhupada's books so that we can actually go out and interest people that, uh, yes, we should try to sell them that you must be interested now. Don't stay any longer in this material world, but you must come back to the spiritual world. This is your real home, and we have to tell them something or somehow induce them by our association that they please take these books. So, Prabhupada's coming to the Western world, Nirvishesha Sunyavadi, was to eliminate voidism, and impersonalism. Because everybody in the world at this time is infected with these diseases of voidism and impersonalism. Every one of us, is, uh, their hearts have become hardened. And we see that when we go on Sankirtan. That actually we're going out on Sankirtan to distribute Prabhupada's books to people. To we're, we're going out simply to help people. We have no ulterior motive. There's no material motivation. Simply we want to do good to others. And people resist us. They're fearful of us. They run away. And they think, oh no, no, I don't require any help. I don't require this book. I have no time. I have no money. But a devotee, a Sankirtan preacher, should be so compassionate that just as a person who's suffering from a high fever doesn't know what they want, so we have to deal with the materialists in the same way. We are like doctors. A Sankirtan devotee is very merciful and compassionate. I was one of my disciples in New York. She's a doctor. So actually she comes from another country, so she's getting her... She has to go through a certain program to get qualified to practice medicine. So they put her in this hospital, the most probably the worst hospital in the whole United States. And she was describing the condition of the people who come into this hospital, you know, in East Harlem, New York. And so many cases of AIDS, so many cases of drug abuse. 
And every day, at least every day, she sees someone die. And she says it's so pathetic. The people, as they're dying, sometimes they're screaming, sometimes they start crying, sometimes they become angry at the doctors. She said, and somehow they're trying to give the people some relief. As doctors, all they can do is try to relieve the condition. But they're all in different states of you know, total distress. And very often, she says, they become very angry and abuse the doctors. So it's no wonder then that when we go on Sankirtan, sometimes people try to abuse us. We have had experiences where people would actually hit us, fight with us, simply because we're going out trying to distribute books. They would become so infuriated. So we have to therefore be very compassionate. When Nityananda Prabhu was hit by Madai, right? He was hit by Madai, by an earthen pot and blood flowed from his head, then he prayed to Lord Chaitanya, do not become angry, but please give your mercy to this fallen soul. So this is the mood of Nityananda Prabhu, who is the original spiritual master, the original preacher, Balaram. And we have to be in that same mentality. When Vasudev Datta right, was praying that hmm, Vasudev Datta was praying for the deliverance. He told he deliverance of the conditioned souls. He told Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that uh, you have come to deliver the fallen souls, so I request you to please deliver everyone in this universe. And if you say that their sins are preventing them, then please put all the sinful reactions of all the conditioned souls upon me so that everyone in this universe can go back to Godhead. The Prophet points out that where is there ever been such a compassionate person as Vasudev, isn't it? He said there's no example in any other religion in the world where anyone ever prayed to please be, give me all the sinful reactions of all the conditioned souls in the entire universe so that they can go back to Godhead. I don't care what happens to me. Purely out of compassion. So we are also having to accept some reaction. Prabhupada said that when a Sankirtan devotee goes out and distributes books and mixes with people, he also has to accept some reaction by association. Just like if you associate... When you associate with someone who has a disease, there's the chance of infection. So we have to take precaution. Just as you inoculate yourself at the time of an epidemic disease, our inoculation is a strong Krishna conscious morning program. You cannot go out and preach and distribute books unless you are very, very strong spiritually. Otherwise, you become enamored. The disease that they have is that they are infected, they are diseased by high intense attraction to maya. And we're strictly told to avoid the association of sense gratifiers. And it's mentioned very clearly. Anyone who's a, who is a vishai, don't associate with them. And yet we're told by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to preach to everyone. So this seems to be a contradictory instruction. On the one hand, we're told, don't associate with the Vishayas. On the other hand, we're told, preach to everyone. So the conclusion has to be that we have to associate with them, but not to take anything, but to give them Krishna. Not to learn from them the ways of Maya. Prabhupada, I remember once in, uh, Prabhupada woke up and he just said, I had a dream. And in that dream, all of the, uh, there was this Harinam party the chanters, and the chanters went out and they were chanting and they were surrounded by so many no, non-chanters and gradually some of the non-chanters were becoming chanters and were joining us. So I asked Prabhupada, did any of the chanters become non-chanters? And Prabhupada said, no, how could it be? Their names are already inscribed going back to home, back to Godhead. Sankirtan Yagna Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki, Brihat Mridanga Ki, Gaur Premanandi. So this is very, very important. Every day you get a chance to practice. You should look forward each day to the Japa period in the morning thinking, 
Now let's see how well I can do it today. Let's see how many rounds I can chant where my mind doesn't deviate. This is yoga. People want a challenge. You can never get a better challenge than this. And this is what surrender means. When you say, how do I surrender? Practice surrendering to the holy name. Nam Prabhu. Bhakti Chumash was saying, right? Didn't you say that? You were talking about Nam Prabhu. The name is called Nam Prabhu. Where, where did you say that? In, in Amsterdam. Yeah, Nam Prabhu. So the holy name, Nam Avatar also. In this day and age, the, whole, the, the Lord descends in the form of His holy name. So if you want to know how to surrender, you practice every day for two hours surrendering in the Japa period. It's a very practical way to learn how to surrender. And what is the process of surrender? See if you can stop your mind from wandering. Instead of surrendering to all your other thoughts, you only surrender to Nam Prabhu. When your mind goes away, you just say, No, Krishna is present now. And I will only think of Him. If you start to chant in this way, very quickly you will get a taste. Very quickly you will get free from your unwanted desires. It is all there in the holy names of the Lord. And therefore also kirtan is even more powerful. Because when we all chant, then it's very easy to block out everything else. And when we go out on Harinam, it is even more easy. In the early days, we were very lucky. We were going out on Harinam eight hours every day. <laughs> every day, that was our activity. Eight hours a day chanting and distributing books. We would chant and write with the same Harinam party, we would distribute books. And it was like, I remember we'd go out, and the whole place, wherever we were, the whole place would just turn into Vaikuntha. It was just like that. We could just feel that the Holy Name would just pervade everything. you know. And we would stand there, and people would walk into our transcendental net, and we would distribute a book to them. And it was so nice. I remember we used to have these back, all that we had in those days was Back to Godhead to distribute. We'd take the Back to Godhead magazine and we'd just take one article after that and preach to the people, you know, according to who they were, we'd just say, look at this article. We'd start preaching and we'd just convince the people, somehow, take a book, take this magazine. So, very nice, you know, the Sankirtan movement is a very, very nice opportunity to practice preaching your realizations to people. Uh, the very empowered book distributors, they are empowered because they're able to actually discuss about Krishna as they're selling books. That makes book distribution very alive. They have become so transcendental that they can just talk about Krishna while selling books. And all day long, you can imagine, it's constant shravanam kirtana. Holding the books, meeting the conditions, so thing. oh, here's a nice, my dear friend, eternal friend has just come before me, another spirit soul who I am eternally related to. And immediately with a very friendly demeanor, he opens up the book. Look at this very beautiful book, which I want to give you today. And if you have it, if you can feel genuine compassion, that will come out in your voice. That will affect another person that you're preaching to, unless they're a big demon. You know? But generally speaking, it will affect most people and you'll be able to distribute the book nicely and you can tell them and if you're enlivened if you're enthused with the product then people will want it look at these beautiful pennies you can tell them these are paintings of the spiritual world you believe in God most people do and then they can say this book will tell you so many details about the very God that you're believing in ah, people will take it and you can say, look, a book like this costs $25 normally. We're only selling it for three, four, five dollars Practically, we're giving it away for the price of printing. I don't make any money out here. This is a non-sectarian movement just meant to help people. Somehow you have to convince people, take the book. And they'll be greatly benefited, you'll be greatly benefited. So, however, the Lord reveals himself to his devotees being pleased with them because of their transcendental loving service rendered unto him. The more you do service to Krishna, the more you will have the opportunity to get to know him. Krishna will reveal himself according to the level of your service. So try to remember that. You know, when you're asked to do service, you go, oh no. You know, people, people say, oh, I'm very busy. I'm, 
But actually, Krishna is giving you an opportunity. We live in the society of devotees just to get the facility to render service. And the more service we can render with the most loving mood, Krishna will reveal it. That's why when you see Krishna, then your eyes you know, will behold the Lord. He's very kind. The deity is very kind. The deity, the name. There's so many ways in which Krishna reveals himself to us if your heart is softened through service. If your heart is softened through surrender, then you'll be able to... Then everything will have meaning. Then you won't want to go to sleep at night and you'll be so eager to wake up in the morning for more and more service. This is, then you have Raghunuga Bhakti. ...that I am going on behalf of Radha Govinda. And uh, people are not so religious now that they can understand that Radha Govinda are here and deserve to be served by everyone of New York. So by one method or another, I'm going out to the people and uh, offering them an opportunity to give a donation which will be able to be used in the service of Radha Govinda. And in this way, their devotion to Krishna has begun. I would just meditate all day long on Radha Govinda and serving them. That's how I would go out on Sankar time, to ask for Lakshmi from people. I would be meditating on Radha Govinda all the time within my mind and then allowing them to make me speak whatever words are necessary to get people to give some Lakshmi. No, Krishna said, Krishna will give you all intelligence how to speak in such a way to guide them. I don't think it's difficult at all. You just have to practice this Krishna meditation. Meditate on Radha and Govinda and go out on their behalf and ask people to give donations in any way that will be inspiring to the people to give the lakshmi. Cheating them? Yes, we're cheating them of maya. We're cheating them of the karma that they would ordinarily occur, incur through using that money for sinful reasons. They're being deprived of their karma. We're, we're purifying them of their karma. And that way we're cheating them. Okay, so now it's time for everyone to go downstairs for taking prasadam and then out on Samkirtan. Jai, all glories to C.C. Guru and Gauranga. If you simply try to get knowledge by studying the books, without doing service, the knowledge remains academic. It doesn't become realized. Realized knowledge means that after you sit in a class, you apply what you've learned. If you cannot apply what you've learned, you haven't learned. And if you cannot express to someone else what you've heard, you haven't heard. Hearing has two features, hearing and speaking, shravanam, kirtanam. When the hearing and the speaking are complete and proper, then there's smaranam, remembrance of Krishna. That will follow automatically. Therefore, everyone should preach. Everyone should preach. In New York City, in 1972, Prabhupada gave an order to all of the devotees that different devotees may be expert in different services, but everybody should be expert in distributing my books. And the order was given to every devotee in the New York temple that every day you have to go out at least one hour and distribute books. And even devotees who had jobs just like one devotee who is now uh, our, one of our GBC members, Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. He was working for some big company, I think it was Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola, big company in New York, but every day he would go for one hour coming home from work in the train and he would distribute books. No one was excused. Prabhupada said everybody has their particular service, but there's one service that everybody has to know how to do, and that's how to sell my books. So this, this is because Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. When you preach, you realize. You get a lot of realizations. I, I started 
I mean, I practically started my preaching career here in Los Angeles in front of Bullock's department store. I used to go out every day for at least eight hours, say six hours in front of Bullock's. And we'd have to take back, to, at, those, at those days, the only thing we had was back to Godheads. So we'd take back to Godheads out, and we'd stand there, and we'd just stop people in our dotis. And you'd have to stop these old ladies and everybody, and you'd have to show them the magazine and preach to them until finally they'd give a quarter and take book. I was always the top Sankirtan devotee coming in with $5 a day. <laughs> that was the top collector, $5. <laughs> so it was, but it, it was very good because you had to preach on the strength of the magazine, you know. And you, it was not, there was nothing to help ha, because at one point they even stopped our kirtan, so we had practically no kirtan. We just had to stand there with the magazines and convince people that the that the philosophy in this literature was required by them to help them to make it in this world. Otherwise, they were going to suffer so much. And we'd have to show the articles and explain the value of each article. But what it did was it forced us to learn the books. Actually, we did have a book. Now I remember we had a book, but we didn't know how to distribute books, big books at that time. We had the Bhagavad Gita. And of course, we had the first canon of the Bhagavatam. We had the Bhagavad Gita just come out, Macmillan's abridged Gita. And I remember every day we would study the Bhagavad Gita intensely, you know, underlining things. And we'd always be qu quizzing each other back and forth, testing each other to see how well we could remember different verses and giving different arguments back and forth. Someone would play the part of an impersonalist and someone would play the part of, you know, we would use everything that we got hit with on the streets, different people asking us questions. We'd turn them around and start asking each other and figure out all kinds of ways to defeat the different arguments. This way we became fixed up in Krishna consciousness. We were able to defeat all arguments. And this is one of the uh, abilities of a preacher. For someone to become a proper preacher, they have to be able to defeat opposing arguments. So the only way you'll be able to do that is if you go out and preach. And there's no higher taste. The highest taste, you know, even higher than prashanam is preaching. And for me to say that is good because I like to eat prashanam. But higher taste than prashanam is preaching. Because even if prashanam is waiting, you could go on preaching. That's a fact. If you're in the middle of preaching, you forget everything else. All problems cease. You know, you get caught up in Krishna's internal energy, and it's the most wonderful experience. So we should look forward for preaching opportunities. Devotees should place themselves in such a way that they are in preaching positions. Everybody, it doesn't matter what your service may be, you should realize that some portion of the day should be devoted. And the best thing to do is to take books out and distribute them. We have ample stock of books. And selling books is the highest thing. Selling books gives the greatest satisfaction. When you have to convince someone to buy a book, it's very nice because then it really requires you to take up the challenge of convincing them in their minds, whatever their arguments may be, to try and show them how this book will actually be a benefit for them. Now someone may say, I'm not inclined. Everyone is inclined because everyone is by nature a servant of God. We are all pure spirit soul. We are all part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore, it is everyone's nature to want to hear about Krishna. No one is excluded. No matter where you go, into Alaska, into Africa, South America, you know, Asia, you can go anywhere in the world, any planet, anywhere in the universe. Anything that's alive has a desire to hear about Krishna. You can go out on the streets with this absolute conviction that whoever you meet is actually a servant of Krishna, but they're covered. Their natural tendency to want to hear about Krishna is covered. Now, our business is to somehow fan the spark. That's what preaching is all about. Your expertise as a preacher, how you will fan the spark? How will you fan that little spark of Krishna consciousness that's in everyone's heart? If you're not expert, you may blow it out practically, almost. So you have to know how to do it. You have to know how to make the fire grow a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. That's called cultivation. So, <clears throat> this philosophy is so nice. It's, we have a complete monopoly on this philosophy. We have a monopoly 
You know, people go crazy trying to get monopolies in business, trying to control the market. We have the market. Nobody has what we have. No one has prashanam. No one has kirtan. No one has deities. No one has philosophy. We have it. It's, we've got the monopoly. And everybody needs it. The only thing is they don't know that they need it. That's the only missing link. We have what they, they need it and we have what they need. But they don't know that they need what they need. And they don't know that we have it. That's the only point. So it all depends on our preaching mood. All of these classes that we give are all meant to invoke within us very strong preaching desire. Preaching is the essence. Everyone in this movement is meant to be a preacher. That's why even God comes as a preacher. Lord Chaitanya, he's a preacher. Lord Nityananda, he's a preacher. Advaita, Gadadhar, Srivast, they're all preachers. The Panchatattva and their associates, they're all in a preaching mood. So everyone in this movement should be in that preaching mood. And if you say you're not, that's because you're not putting yourself out. You don't go out into the public. You'll only understand the mood of the Panchatattva. You'll only understand the mood of the Chaitanya Chaitamrita when you go out and preach this message. You cannot understand it just sitting back and reading about it. You will not understand it just being in the background. If you want to get the real understanding of how Lord Chaitanya's movement is, is, is inspired and is spreading, you go out and take part in it. Take these books out, live by them, and preach them, and sell them, and distribute them. Then the world will be changed and turned around for Krishna. So, so um, unfortunately, in the present day, people are falsely claiming proprietorship over this world, when actually everything is owned by the Supreme Lord. And so the Brahmanas, the devotees, have to struggle even for their bare maintenance, when in fact they should be maintained by the government for doing the best service, namely to direct the people in the path back to Godhead. This is the real purpose of human life, this is the purpose of civilization, this is the purpose of a kingdom. It is to direct the population towards a godly life. Uh, and in order to do so, the Brahmanas, the Vaishnavas, are needed. So the government should realize that the best public servants are the devotees of Krishna, uh, the members of ISKCON. But because the government is demonic, in the sense that they are godless, therefore they cannot recognize the value of devotees, and even sometimes they say that the devotees are leeching or simply living off of the hard labor and the property of others, without realizing that it is actually the devotees who are meant to represent the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Government, who is the real proprietor of everything. So in order to right this uh, very backward situation, the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has been inaugurated, and Srila Prabhupada, as the foremost general of the Sankirtan movement, is trying to push us to distribute books like anything, so that people can be properly educated about what is what, who is the proper proprietor, not that people think that they are the actual proprietors, but rather we should understand that the Supreme Lord is the real proprietor. So in order to educate them, we are pushing these books. Uh, it is all right to make many programs for preaching, but unless and until the people are properly educated, how will they ever appreciate any other programs? So to get them basically educated requires that we distribute these books as much as possible. Then gradually, by reading these books, people will be able to appreciate the position of ISKCON and the devotees of ISKCON, and they will seek out the guidance of the devotees to help them in their life. So, Krishna looks after his devotees. Devotees of his kind sometimes become unnecessarily worried that although God is maintaining the elephants who eat 100 pounds of food a day, he maintains all the various wildlife, he maintains practically every living entity, 
But somehow the devotees sometimes worry he may not maintain us. He may not be able to maintain us. It is very easy for God to maintain everyone because he is the cause of all causes. He is the creator, he is the maintainer, and he is the destroyer. Therefore, if he maintains those who are in complete ignorance of him, namely animals and other lesser creatures, do you think that he will neglect those who are his sold out devotees? Surely he will maintain them. Therefore, with full enthusiasm, optimism, and faith, devotees should simply take up the missionary work of Krishna consciousness and not worry so much about maintenance, because Krishna will maintain. If we surrender unto him and serve him fully, then he will look after our needs without any difficulty. This is why Krishna says that Sarva Dharma Pritya Mame Kamasaranambraja. He says you give up all kinds of duties, whatever they may be, and just take up the one duty of surrendering. How does one surrender? Srila Prabhupada taught us by pushing forward the Sankirtan movement like anything. He pushed and he pushed and he pushed and he pushed and he didn't care so much about maintenance. I remember from my own personal experience that for a year and a half I entered into the Grihasta Ashram and Prabhupada, the whole time practically I was with Prabhupada, he never inquired whether I was getting what I needed. He never inquired where was I staying. He never inquired at all about the Grihasta Ashram. He just engaged me in preaching. So from this, we should understand that that is the transcendental position. As soon as we start worrying so much about all of our material necessities, we lose our fixed attention on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to see that all of the devotees who are his followers in the generations to come, that they understand that there is very little time there is very little time. Uh, we do not know at any moment we may go. Uh, one cannot say when the end of life will come. And therefore, with all energy, with all attention, we should try our best to become Krishna conscious and offer this opportunity to others. And then live simply by whatever comes of its own. That is Brahminical life. Brahminical life means a life of simplicity. It means to accept whatever little comes of its own accord and not to make so many efforts. Uh, the karmis are making so much effort simply for maintenance, struggling so hard for maintenance. Uh, but we should not imitate them. They are karmis, they are mudhas, they are fools. Rather, we should understand that except for the devotees of Iskand, no one is going to bring any light into this world. So with all energy, we should try our best to spread Krishna consciousness. To understand the Sankirtan movement is not an intellectual activity, because Sankirtan is an all-embracing principle. It means that one is willing to uh, propagate Lord Chaitanya's mission in the modern age uh, through various different means. Uh, as we heard in reading the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, that uh, the process of Krishna consciousness has to be spread in such a nice way that uh, people understand that the primary goal of life is to develop love of God. So uh, it requires very intelligent and novel direction to spread the Sankirtan movement because people are adverse to chanting Hare Krishna. Prabhupada often would say that sometimes we request people chant, chant, chant and people say can't, can't, can't. In other words, they remain stubbornly opposed to Krishna consciousness, especially when they are a little bit materially intelligent, uh, just like the atheistic scientists then they become very stubbornly opposed to the spreading of love of God. And therefore, devotees have to be very intelligent on how to spread Krishna consciousness. 
They have to uh, find methods which will lure the conditioned souls into hearing about Krishna. So we have to be very uh, determined to introduce Krishna consciousness to the public at large. Uh, it will not be very much credit for us if we simply maintain ourselves for eating and sleeping. Mm. Prabhupada used to say that uh, that is the business of old ladies, simply to stay at home and to eat and sleep. And he used to uh, agitate us in this way to go out and preach, saying that those who have life, they're capable of preaching. So our organization and our energy has to be so directed that we can judge our success by how much accomplishment there is in preaching. And preaching is judged by how many devotees are made, how many books are distributed, and how many temples and deities are opened and installed. So this type of competition is very nice. Uh, when we were going back to India with Prabhupada, Prabhupada anticipated that there might be some uh, criticism or jealousy coming from certain parties there, uh, uh, his god brothers in particular. Uh, so he was always uh, prodding me and prompting me in how to deal with them in case they would criticize. Uh, so he would ask, he would say, you ask them, how many books have you distributed? How many miles have you traveled? How many temples have you opened? He said, in this way, you should be able to judge who is actually the son of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Now, to preach Krishna consciousness, one has to be empowered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Lord Chaitanya's empowerment is given directly according to how much we discipline ourselves and make ourselves receptive for hearing his transcendental message. The message of Krishna can be heard uh, when one is in a very submissive and receptive mood. So the consciousness of a devotee has to be prepared in such a way that it can receive the knowledge of Krishna, the message of Krishna. Just like ground has to be cultivated very nicely before it will be receptive to the seed, which will later on, if it's planted properly and watered properly, grow very nicely and sprout into fruits and flowers. In the same way, we have to prepare our consciousness. So this morning program that we go through every day from 4 o'clock till about 8.30 or 9 or later, depending on when the prashanam comes out, that is our program for preparing ourselves for becoming Krishna conscious and being empowered by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Lord Chaitanya can enter the devotee's heart uh, and uh, roar like a lion. The devotee who feels Lord Chaitanya within his heart roaring the Hare Krishna mantra can go out and roar Krishna consciousness in such a way that everyone will take note. Devotees have to be so much enlivened. So the source of enlivenment comes from Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we have to beg Krishna to be, please take his seat nicely within our heart. Please be situated in our heart. But in order to do that, our heart has to be made very clean. So that requires the chanting. Chanting of Hare Krishna cleanses out the heart. And hearing Prabhupada's books, this is another important activity. How many of you are spending your time each day in reading Prabhupada's books? I know that if I ask this question, and you know, if you answer honestly, it will be shown that most people here do not take the time to read Prabhupada's books. And I won't embarrass you by making you raise your hands. But Prabhupada wrote these books for all of us, first of all. So at least you should read an hour a day. Actually, Prabhupada even stated that that you should read his books an hour a day. Uh, if you want to become very fixed up, to be very fixed up means to get off the sentimental platform, the emotional platform, and to get onto the platform of real sentiment, real emotion. Otherwise, we are simply 
repeating the emotions and sentiments that we have learned from the materialists. But if you want to become a devotee of Krishna, you have to relearn the real emotions, spiritual emotions. The senses, spiritual senses, the spiritual mind has to be awakened. And that happens through the mercy of the previous acharyas. When we study Prabhupada's books, when we take in this transcendental knowledge, then our minds will be properly adjusted. Our intelligence will be very fit. Then we cannot be deceived in any way. We don't get tricked by Maya in any way. We have the strength to fight and push back Maya when she tries to attack us. So, the spiritual master should see that a devotee is serious to execute spiritual life before giving initiation. Uh, otherwise, if a devotee is not very serious, then it means that the spiritual master is going to have a great effort, a great difficult task on his hands to be able to make a disciple advance properly in spiritual life. This means that each disciple has the responsibility to become more serious in order to lighten the burden of the spiritual master. Just like a father takes pride in having very nice sons and daughters who assist the father in all ways in the family's activities. So the spiritual master becomes very much pleased to see his spiritual sons and daughters who are engaged in the family activity. Our family activity is the mission of Lord Chaitanya. Krishna has come in this age as a preaching avatar. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his hands are up. Nityananda Prabhu, his hands are extended upwards in a dancing and preaching mood. So our family line is preaching. And specifically, uh, our family business of preaching is books, writing, publishing, and distributing. So all devotees, Prabhupada said, are supposed to become expert in book distribution. Because to be expert in book distribution means you have to know how to preach. In the early days, uh, we used to go out in our dhotis uh, and we would hold Back to God in magazines and we'd have to sell each magazine simply on the strength of the magazine. No matter who would come forward, we'd open the magazine up, show them a particular article and start preaching about it and finally convince someone to give us 25 cents for the magazine. In a day, say in five hours, if you collected six dollars, that was top. Six dollars was the top collection in five hours. Then we would come back to the temple, take a little prashanam, and then go out again from about eight o'clock till midnight. At least that was our program on the West Coast. And we would again collect another five or six dollars. And at least eight or nine hours of solid preaching so everybody had to know the philosophy. If you didn't know the philosophy, you didn't sell the magazine because the, the materialists would defeat you in all kinds, and they put forward so many arguments. You know. So this was a very nice training. It will be very nice if gradually our devotees can be uh, enabled to be able to preach in this way, to present not only Back to Godhead magazines, but Prabhupada's big books as well. Prabhupada wanted to see his book, big books distributed when our Radha party was distributing Back to Godhead magazine, 100,000 each month, we were distributing at least 100,000 magazines. We had a set order with the BBT to deliver us 100,000 Back to Godheads every month. So Prabhupada said, that is very good, but big book distribution is also very nice. So from that we understood that Prabhupada also wanted his big books distributed. So then we started to distribute big books, 10,000, then 20,000 a month, and it went onwards. And we still maintain our 100,000 magazine quota. So, New York is capable of distributing, in this way, unlimited books. This city can take unlimited amounts of literatures. Our goal should be ultimately to see a full set of Prabhupada's books in every home. If you can install a set of books in Prabhupada's, in, of Prabhupada's books in a person's home, it is exactly like putting the deity of the Lord inside the home. Because in this day and age, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the worshipful deity. So, if someone has the deity in their home, they must be devotees. Anyone who gets a set of Prabhupada's books installed in their home becomes a devotee of Krishna. So, 
Uh, we should be very enthusiastic in going out on Sankirtan. Uh, even though sometimes there may be some difficulties, just like we suffer some setbacks, we lose some devotees, or we are financially uh, not well to do, but those times can be reversed. That at any stage that you come to Krishna consciousness, you can start to become serious. Our movement is so nice that it is offering everyone a chance to engage in the topmost activity of preaching work. We don't make distinction between who is a Brahmin, who is a Chatriya, who is a Vaishya, who is a Sudra, who is a Brahmachari, who is a Grihasta, who is a Vanaprastha, Sannyasi, man, woman, even children. We make no such designation. This movement is so nice that it gives everyone equal opportunity to excel in preaching. In the old days, we used to have our uh, competition in Sankatan, and the men and the women even were competing. You know, it, would, it was a very intense competition in book distribution. Who would distribute the most books? And the women were as fired up as the men were, and they would take great satisfaction being able to defeat the men. And the men would become very embarrassed and humiliated if any women beat them. But sometimes the top distributors in the world were women devotees. And everybody's business was how to give pleasure to the spiritual master. And the method was through excelling in preaching work, and especially in book distribution. So Dhruva Maharaj is a kind of disciple that gives great satisfaction to the spiritual master. That means a disciple that does not deviate. A disciple that's so determined that they sacrifice their own personal desire for sense gratification to give pleasure to Krishna. Prabhupada used to say, just for one lifetime, make this sacrifice. For one lifetime, you sacrifice everything for Krishna. For so many lifetimes, you have been serving so many other masters. Now make this experiment. For one lifetime, you only serve Radha and Krishna. And see the result. Krishna will personally come to take you back to Godhead. So, a disciple, a good disciple, is one who can control the mind and senses and not be selfish. Selfishness means to give in to your sense, uh, your senses imploring desires that please satisfy us. You have to control your senses and mind. That means that you have to have the strength to do that controlling. That strength comes from association with devotees, from chanting Hare Krishna, from reading Prabhupada's books, from only eating Krishna Prashanam, from seeing the de deity, taking part in guru worship. All of these different activities are the activities which give a disciple the strength to push maya away. Because Maya is going to tempt you in so many ways. Just like when Arjuna went up to the heavenly planets, one society girl presented herself for enjoying with Arjuna, she immediately, he immediately closed his eyes and addressed her as mother. So that may happen. We go on Sankatan, there are so many women who are alluring. So a woman goes on Sankatan, there are so many attractive men who are coming on in a certain way. And we have to simply think, this is my father or this is my mother. And be fixed in our real business. I'm not going to be lured away. I'm not going to be forgetful of what my purpose is. No. We have to do this. This is so important. The world needs, I said this the other day, it needs heroes and heroines. It needs heroic people. It's not enough that only there are heroes in our books. There have to be real heroes in this day and age that we can put our faith in. And, and you have to become those heroes. Now you're all young men and women. One day you will all have to take up the same type of position. Everyone has to. By the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Chaitanya says, everyone become guru. By my order, he said, everyone become guru. So the world needs hundreds and thousands of spiritual masters. It needs perfect examples that people can take shelter of. If suddenly there's a world war, and if there's an atomic bomb blast, so many of us may be scattered in so many different directions and have to deliver thousands, give knowledge and guidance to thousands of people. So are you strong to be able to do that? When you get tested severely, are you going to be holding up? Or are you going to crumble and say, oh, I just want to join you? You just realize this, that the next time Maya 
presents herself in such an alluring way that for a few moments of sense enjoyment, you're going to sacrifice so much pleasure to Guru and Krishna. So many people are counting on you. Just understand this point. So many people want to take their birth, spiritually speaking. There are literally tens of thousands of devotees waiting to take birth. I don't mean by sex. I mean they're waiting to take birth by initiation. There are thousands and thousands of people in New York who are ready to become devotees. The only thing is they haven't been touched yet by a devotee. That's all that's stopping them. And according to your purity, you can bring them forward. If you have intense desire for spreading Lord Chaitanya's mission, simply by that desire, Lord Chaitanya will lead you to meet such persons. And by your pure association, they'll be inspired to take up spiritual life. So Narana Muni is such a touchstone. Wherever he goes, people become devotees. Now we have to be the followers of Narana Muni. We have to follow in his footsteps. Just like Prabhupada, wherever his lotus feet touched the planet, that place became a Tirtha. Prabhupada... Prabhupada was not, you know, he never, it's, it, he never touched the planet without an effect. Everything that he did produced transcendental results. So we should be so Krishna conscious that our words, each word, each of our thoughts, each of our actions, it will be very fruitful and productive. Not that we speak words and they have no effect that we try to touch people's lives and if the touch is empty and ineffectual. You have to be very, very potent. So that potency comes by discipline. And that's the meaning of being ready for initiation. When you're so disciplined that you have control over your senses, then take initiation. Not that, you know, you think, well, I, if I get initiated, then I'll get empowered. Then, then you may never get empowered. Taking risk and initiating neophyte people, there may be some risk that this guru wants to take, but basically the disciple should be already fit for practicing spiritual life. They should have demonstrated without a doubt to the Vaishnavas and to the spiritual master that they're very ready to execute Lord Chaitanya's mission. So, uh, we have a great... Uh, great family line that we're coming in. You know, the best personalities are in our line. From Prabhupada back onwards through disciplic succession, such great personalities. And we should be worthy of that family line. When you give your name, that you're a member of this Sampradaya, your activities should be so impeccable that people know, yes, this is the fruit of this tree. This is the tree of Lord Chaitanya, this is the limb of Iskhan, and this fruit tastes exactly accordingly. You know, not that they take a fruit from this tree and it tastes like a sour lemon. It's supposed to taste like a sweet mango, not like a sour lemon. Then you're in the wrong, you know, somehow or other you were grafted. So, Please take seriously Krishna consciousness and do good to yourself, do good to the world. You know, be a great uh, credit to our whole Sampradaya and to our ISKCON family by becoming outstanding devotees. That is uh, our humble request to all of you. Finally, the last word, Yavana, the servant of Yamaraj, who we hope that we shall not see. Still, as we can see in the story of Ajamil, even if you see the servants of Yamaraj, they cannot touch you. The servants of Yamaraj are sometimes visited by the Vaishnavas. The Vaishnavas then preach. It's very nice how Yamaraj became so enlivened. <laughs> when, uh, that was a very nice description in the Bhagavatam. When the, his servants, the Yamadutas, came down and they started complaining about the Vishnu Dutas and they started explaining the uh, Bhagavad Dharma 
And Yamraj was so gladdened that even while sitting in such a hellish place amongst his hellish followers, where he never gets to hear Bhag- Bhagavad Dharma, suddenly they were all repeating Bhagavad Dharma. And he was very happy. And he explained to them, yes, this is, these are the Vishnu do this. They're right, you can't touch a Jamya. So, practically, we have to go and preach Bhagavad Dharma to all Yamadutas. At least those who are practicing. Some of these people today look like Yamadutas. They act like Yamadutas. They're agents, practically, of death personified. And we have to preach Bhagavad Dharma to them. But we should not be fearful. Just like we can see, the Vishnu Dutas were fearless. So we are the Vishnu Dutas. Eh? The devotees are all servants of Vishnu. So don't be fearful when you go out and preach, even if you're dealing directly with Yamadutas. You should know that you're protected completely. Just like we see on the altar, the chakra and club below Sri Sri Radha Gopinath. So there's no fear. Maharaj Ambarish was given all protection by the Sudarshan chakra, even against such a powerful muni as Durvasha. Yamadutas are nothing. So Krishna uh, is the most uh, original and primary name of the Lord. And Rama uh, is the reservoir of all pleasure. These are personal names for Krishna. And Hare uh, or Hara is the energy of the Lord. So we are addressing Krishna by first of all calling upon the energy Hara or Srimati Radharani. So anyone who uh, regularly chants these holy names, uh, will feel the benefit. When Srila Prabhupada came uh, to the Western world, he brought with him some very simple paraphernalia. He brought uh, his books, the Srimad Bhagavatam, and he brought the holy name of Krishna. And he sat down uh, amongst the Western people and began to chant Hare Krishna. And when some people came forward, he offered them his Bhagavatams to read and cooked some prasadam for them. And on the program of these three, uh, the distribution of the holy names, distribution of Krishna prasadam, and distribution of his transcendental books, this Krishna consciousness movement has been founded. Uh, Actually, it is the uh, function of the eternal soul, and we should not think that Krishna consciousness is a sectarian, dogmatic uh, religious faith. It is not. It is, after all, non-sectarian. It is meant for all people. It is universally uh, applicable in everyone's life. When you try to explain Krishna consciousness to people, you don't have to fear that, well, this is for some and not for others, because the principles are universal. If we understand the scientific application of these principles, it will enable you to preach to practically anyone and to benefit them. Uh, So, the movement is now spreading. We can see even in the uh, most unlikely places, behind the Iron Curtain, behind the Bamboo Curtain, Krishna consciousness has now uh, entered and people are embracing it. Uh, I had taken sannyas, that means the renounced order of life, in January of 1972. I became a sannyasi. So I, Prabhupada actually wanted me to help with the management in India, but I wanted to go back. So I went back to America. And, you know, it's just like when you practice running with weights, you build up your muscles so that afterwards, when you take off the weights, you can run very quickly. So having been with Prabhupada for four years, practically nonstop in India, my muscles were very strong. (laughs) And uh, it was... No contest, in the sense that there was so much empowerment from Prabhupada's association that we were able to form a party, which was became famous as the Radhadamanar party. Uh, I, it started with my good friend who I had joined with. His name was Vishnu John Swami, and he had one bus and about eight men. So when I joined Vishnu John, uh, we, he was every day. He's a very famous devotee. Even now, mo- many of the melodies which our movement does in kirtans, he he made these melodies. Prabhupada was so fond of his kirtan that he said that when Vishnu Jan would sing, I, I 
would be walking and I would think, I am not in this material world. I am walking in Vaikuntha. And it's a fact. His melodies were out of this. They're just coming from heavenly planets. They're so celestial. Very special devotee. So he was very sweet and I was very heavy. <laughs> it was just like a chutney, you know. <laughs> chutney, they say about a chutney that it's, it's too uh, sweet to resist but too hot to handle. So the combination was very good. It was like that. So we were like a Krishna conscious chutney. And we would go out and uh, play every day our music. He would play the harmonium. I'd play the drums. Some boys would play the cartels. And we, you know, started to make devotees. Of course, Vishnu John, he had his deities of Radhan Damodar, which were very nice deities. And I have tried to tell something about that in a book called The Servant of the Servant. Anyway, these were beautiful Radhan, that's okay, Radhan Krishna deities which we would travel with in a bus. There were many nice pastimes that happened. One time but someone saw us when we were doing an arti, you know, and Radha and Damodar was there in the bus, and the people saw us waving the arti lamp in front of the deities, and they thought that they were little children and that we were torturing them. <laughs> <laughs> so they immediately called the police, and the police stormed into our bus and said, okay, you know, where are these children that you're keeping as a hostage? So then we gave the policeman the darshan of Radha and Damodar, and we said, you know, sir, these are just our deities. You know. And the policeman started to laugh. And in this way, there were many pastimes. Brihat Mridanga Ki, Gaur Premanandi. You're still here. It's over. Go home. 